There's so much to show you guys in the backyard. I mean, every single thing you look at could be a piece of information um, that I can share with you guys. And what I'm looking at right now is uh, really the bane of my fruit growing existence. <laughs> this is a shade tree. And not because it's giving me lots of shade is it the bane of my existence, because lots of things actually grow quite well in shade. Uh, if you look behind me here, we have some pawpaw. We have some carrots that are doing quite well. Look at the comfrey that's just enormous. You know, there's gumi in this bed, which does quite well in shade. Gooseberries, you know, strawberries as well. Um, I have even potatoes in here. More gumi, honeyberries. You know, um, lots of things do well in, in uh, partial shade. But what the bane, what I want to get back to is that this is really the bane of my existence here. You can see along the stem here of this tree that there's these little flowers forming right now. See them right here? And this is some kind of cherry. Now, if I look closely at the leaves, uh, this is definitely very similar to the leaves that I have on my cherry trees. I think this is like a, I don't remember the exact species name that I found, but uh, this is a really inedible, cherry tree that produces cherries in large quantities. I have uh, really not seen them until this year. So it was like, ah, oh, cool, I have a cherry tree in my backyard, right? But um, I don't think they're very edible. And what ends up happening is that these fruits that are forming right now, these flowers that are coming out, I mean, great fodder for the bees, but these cherries will drop from the trees at some point. Because nothing eats them. Nothing's eating them, right? They're just hanging up there, getting super ripe. And then they're dropping from the tree and falling down on the ground and covering this massive area here on the ground with cherries. In fact, even back here on the other side of the fence, you know, even over towards there, towards the neighbor, I mean, oh, there's so many cherries. And what that brought last year, I noticed, was that all in this area, when I would come back here, you know, look at my pawpaw trees, inspect the compost pile, not really composting, you know, inspect the hugel culture bed here. It was just a rancid smell of fruit fly, a rancid smell of SWD. When these pests, you know, infect these fruits, you really can smell it. Um, it isn't necessarily the smell that got, that put me off. Um, it's the fact that these fruit flies then completed their life cycle in these cherries that I can't eat, I can't pick them, the tree's so massive. Um, and when it ends up happening is that they drop to the ground, the, the, fr the flies, including SWD, maybe even African fruit fly, I believe I have that one as well. You know, that thing then completes their life cycle and then moves on to the other crops that I have. So this thing is flowering right now. It's gonna fruit quite early in the season. And then these flies are then gonna be attracted to this area, complete their life cycle, and then go into other crops that I have, including my figs, my strawberries, my blackberries, my raspberries, um, you know, any soft flesh fruit that these fruit flies can then insert their larva into um, is really gonna be a problem for me um, and it's all because of this tree because this is what starts it if you leave any fruit on the ground I've learned last year you're really gonna have some problems so you know um, this year I guess the game plan is that I'm gonna come in here and pick up as many fruits as I can I don't know how I'm gonna pick up all these fruits maybe I'll get a leaf blower and just suck them all up or something I don't know I really don't know if anyone has any ideas of what I could do I would love to hear it because uh, this is really a big problem for growing fruit in my backyard. So uh, other than cutting down the tree, I, you know, that's not going to happen. So anyway, guys, this is probably a very nice lesson for those of you who are struggling with SWD. Maybe there's a tree like this that if you could observe your landscape a little bit better, you would then observe fruit flies completing their life cycle multiplying in massive numbers and then going over and infecting um, other fruits of yours so uh yeah
I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it, it's useful to you guys. So take care and I'll see you guys next time, all right?